where I've grown the most is those opportunities where it's totally outside of my comfort zone. Even nice. the shoot I just did with Audi, like it's been fortunate because I've really got into the automotive space. I love cars. I love mm. shooting cars. I've, I've really worked hard to build out relationships there. And like I was way out of my comfort zone for the shoot we were just on, but I absolutely loved it. Wow, like man. I felt like I was growing my skill set across right, multiple yeah. different verticals within that shoot. And it was just like, that's, that's the kind of stuff that I live for because it expands what I can do. Hello and welcome to the House of Clay podcast. This is your host, Digital Jeff. We're hosting the number one podcast on culture. We got Rolando Sanchez next to me, co-host. How we doing? How we doing? Yeah, and we got a treat for you guys today. We're in Venice Beach, California with one of the top photographers in the world. When we say we're the number one in culture with photography and film <laughs> and fashion and Web3 and NFTs, we really really do the work and we bring you guys the best in culture we got jacob in the house what's up jacob how you doing let's go very very doing? happy to be here sunny venice things are good set having a vibey chat i'm excited for this and uh yeah man, i appreciate you guys having me on board what you guys are doing is incredible so let's get it rolling let's get it rolling <laughs> dude this is, is this your first time on the podcast this is the first time for Amazing. me on this. I, I, to be honest, I don't remember the last time I did a podcast. <laughs> wow. So this is great for everyone, you know. We get yeah. fresh podcast content from me. I get to do it on an incredible channel. Dude. Like, all the wins. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. Let's go. Yeah, we really appreciate you uh, setting some time apart. I know you just launched something new, which we're going to talk about today. And uh, I know how crazy you can get when you launch something new. Obviously, I saw that you guys are traveling, like, from city to city in the last few days. I've been speaking to... Uh, one of your assist executive assistants, Brandon. Yes. Yeah, Brandon. And uh, yeah, he's been all over, like traveling with you. So I know how hectic it's been, and the fact that you're here in Venice Beach, we were here at the same at the same time, like almost pure coincidence. And uh, so we appreciate you taking the time today to to chat and share share with the community, man. Yeah, it's been uh, our our life is incredibly hectic. I, again, I like to say we're the king and queen of overcommitting uh, <laughs> on a work sense because it's just like you know, there's there's so much to do. There's so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. We we love what we do, and and I find myself working best when I'm kind of in that intense work environment. You know, when when there's a lot to do and a lot happening. Um, yeah, I just landed back from from Vegas from a three day Audi shoot, which is amazing, and. Uh, 12 hours before that shoot, I came back from Australia and we were in Bali and Sri Lanka and it's been a, it's been a busy time. Yeah, man. I know while trying to, you know, balance the NFT space, which is no time off whatsoever, basically. Yeah, Web3, <laughs> there's no breaks. No, no breaks. There's no breaks. 100 miles an hour. Yeah, and also like with the, so li li before we go into this NFT world, which I really want to talk about and um, I want to talk just quickly, like give us a quick summary <laughs> of the last like, 10 years of this journey you've gone on, you've been on a crazy run i've been following you for i think i've been following you since 2015 if i'm not if wow. i'm not mistaken uh, is there a way to track that we is i there? wonder actually i'm sure there's an app, there's an app yeah it's gotta be it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's incredible thank you though yeah so yeah, same here. i've been following you for a minute man yeah. I, I think like yeah. when we found out we we're gonna be i was like, all right fuck yeah like i know this guy is yeah. cool. <laughs> all i said was like jacob and he's like jacob jacob like jacob yeah and yeah like, yeah fuck yeah that was nice. yeah and we we both be enrolling our photographers as well you know we've been shooting from I've been shooting since I was like this age of seven. Wow. So and I'm way older than Roland, but Roland's been shooting since the age of I was fifteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, yeah so same. around ten years now. Yeah, similar journey to, to me. It's been a I picked up a camera when I was seventeen, sixteen, yes. maybe a little bit earlier. Um and honestly like it was right around the time it was just a bit before Instagram kinda kicked off and I was going out every night with my camera, just obsessed. It was like the one thing that I felt like I was really good at. And at school up until that point, like I didn't really, nothing had really clicked, mm. right? And some people were like, oh, like really good at maths or really good at science or really good at geography, whatever that was. Nothing had really clicked for me at that point. Like I liked art, but I wasn't a good drawer or a painter. Picked up a camera and I was like, oh, wow, this is fun. Like yeah. this is amazing. Yeah. And like it was the first time I think my teachers were like, oh, you're pretty good at this. And I was like, well, I'm sticking with this then. This is <laughs> a digital camera? Yeah, yeah. So this was, I was like, I, I never really vibed with the dark room. Mm. Like I did it in school, <laughs> but like I was impatient. I wanted to see my photos yeah. straight away. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I spent all of this time just out shooting every night. I, I, I learned London and how it works from just like getting around different places in it because of photography. I would just walk and take the take the tube, whatever, like take buses, cycle, 
go around every single part of London taking photos. And I would do it at night. It was quite funny. I started my photography career just shooting long exposures. Oh, nice. wow. Like I literally did not shoot a sunrise or a sunset for probably two years. Wow. <laughs> Everything was long exposures. So you, my evolved, tripod, yeah. you evolved your style then. Yeah. And then suddenly I was like, oh, wow. Like sunrise and sunset's really nice. Like maybe I should go and shoot that at some point. Cause I'm like out there at two o'clock in the morning, dead streets in London, tripod, long exposures. Um, and I did that for years. And that was right at the point that Instagram kind of like kicked off. And I started a page just for my photography. You know, everyone had their fun little Instagram account for day-to-day -day life. And I was like, no, I want a portfolio. Like yeah. I want a space where I can show my work. And, and there's something very kind of powerful about having people instantly reply saying, hey, I love this. Hey, I like this. Like giving you that feedback, liking it. Like it's, you know, it's the Instagram. reason why people go on. It's the, whatever they've done, whatever they've built. It's like that addiction of like seeing that feedback. And at the start, it was also tied into then meeting people in person like photography events and meetups and this like instagram was this incredible community yeah. um and and that's kind of where it started for me instagram has been now yeah like a 10-year run nearly um and throughout that period was kind of planning on going to university i actually decided not to it was the best decision of my entire yeah, life yeah. Cool. Um, I, I realized that a degree in photography to tell me i'm creative means nothing yeah like yeah. i don't need someone to give me a piece of paper saying i'm creative i'd rather go out and prove that i can do what i can do mm -hmm. and, uh, and across that three-year period i said to myself when i turned down university i said i'm going to do what i can over three years the same time i'd be in a university course and 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 build one i want to be the foundation of my kind of future career and that was beautiful destinations uh, which is a big kind of like yeah. travel social agency that was then going freelance which i kind of did after a three-year stint at beautiful destinations um yeah. and during the last yeah, I'd say five years has been freelance, building my own companies, uh, teaching. So a lot of like photography masterclass, which is all like teaching my skill set in photography, um, working with some of the most incredible brands and, and all while kind of traveling and, and being able to explore some of the far reaches of the world and, and, and do it with my camera and, and inspire other people to, to get out of their house, to get on trips, to go do what they want, to, to learn photography or not, but just appreciate the world around them. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. man. Yeah, nice. beautiful. Yeah. You got something rolling? No, nah, man. Uh, this whole career that you just explained, like, I feel like a lot of people who are upcoming in photography, but back, back then, but especially now, too, since we, we're exposed to all these awesome things that we see on Instagram, you're definitely like a role model for a lot of people, dude. So your story is fucking dope. So congratulations on everything you got going on, man. Super yeah, inspiring. Good, good call not going to college. Not, yeah, not advice amazing. for everybody, that was but yeah. as, as a photographer, I think it doesn't, it doesn't make sense, man. It doesn't help, you know. It for doesn't. me, like I realized very quickly, like real world experience, especially in photography, like mm -hmm. a, a list of the brands you've worked with that trust you, the, the people that you're building. Mm -hmm. and, and Instagram became my, my platform. No, Instagram wasn't paying me directly. They don't pay anyone. Like, but it, it became my portfolio to then go and work with brands and no brand ever asked me, hey, like, what was your degree? Like, no brand. <laughs> Nobody. It's, like, it's like, hey, like, show me what you've done. Yeah. And like, I was fortunate to learn a lot of the business side. You know, I think it's a key aspect that a lot of photographers don't really appreciate. And I love to, that. To, to like, you need, you need to build out good business skills, communication with people, like ways to sell yourself. You can be the most badass photographer, but if you don't know how to communicate how good you are, then it's really challenging. But then you find someone that's like pretty mediocre, that's amazing at selling themselves. They're going to have way more Crushing. success. At what, uh, at what point did you realize that? Like from... Like I think it was Beautiful Destinations when I was there. Like I was fortunate, like the two founders are like older brothers to me and, and, and mentors. And Jeremy. Like, yeah, being able to sit in Tom like Jeremy. meetings with them. Tom and Jeremy Johnson, yeah. being able to sit in meetings with them and, and hear how they communicate selling Beautiful Destinations. I was like, yeah. oh, this is how I need to sell myself. Yeah. And it's like that that has helped so much. Um, and that combination of things I think has just made me think about different things. So like, and I'll, we'll talk about NFTs in a second, but like that was one of the things I noticed coming into the space. It's really important to know how to market yourself. Yeah. And yeah. it's a hard thing to do because a lot of photographers, like we spend our time alone with a camera. So then going out and like being in a group and selling yourself is, is difficult for a lot of mm -hmm. people because you're kind of very solo. That makes sense. But yeah. it's, it's, it's something really important that I'd recommend for anyone that's like got a talent and, and really wants to pursue it is to go in and like figure out, hey, how do I sell myself in an authentic way that doesn't come across like spammy or spammy. something. Yeah, yeah, do it in a way that feels good to you. Yeah. But like really just puts your work out there and says, hey, this is what I do and I can do it well and I want to do it for you. you know? yeah. so. When did it become like, when was the first time you actually like made some money from photography? My first ever job as a photographer was in my, I live just outside of London. I'm from just outside of London. And um, I got offered to shoot photos for a cheese and wine shop. 
Let's go. <laughs> so, so rogue. Yeah. So random. And so but I'm went, sure you were fascinated by doing oh, it, right? You're excited about doing they, it? They wanted an up and coming photographer that hadn't had a job before, obviously, because they wanted it cheaper. <laughs> so, uh, so now I've realized it's like when they say that, now it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, no, we just don't want to pay as much. Yeah. But for me, I was like, yeah, this is my opportunity. Um, did that. It was super fun. Definitely out of my comfort zone. One of the things I think I've, where I've grown the most is those opportunities where it's totally outside of my comfort zone. Even nice. the shoot I just did with Audi, like it's been fortunate because I've really got into the automotive space. I love cars. I love mm. shooting cars. I've, I've really worked hard to build out relationships there. And like, I was way out of my comfort zone for the shoot we were just on, but I absolutely loved it. Wow, like man. I felt like I was growing my skill set across uh, multiple yeah. different verticals within that shoot. And it was just like, that's, that's the kind of stuff that I live for because it expands what I can do. Mm -hmm. And, and then I can take that and I can say, Hey, look what I did for this person. Let me go and do that for you. Yeah. Um, and then that's part of the excitement, you know? Yeah, man. Have you uh, evolved into like a different style of photography throughout the years? Is it is it is or have you have has it stayed very similar? It's interesting. I mean, I think I've always had like a core focus around like the lifestyle travel aspect. Like, mm -hmm. I don't shoot portraits. I don't shoot studio stuff. The first ever studio shoot I did was last year, oh, which wow. is funny. I've been a photographer for what ten years. Yeah. And, like, I went in a studio with an, another Audi shoot. And like I had a car and I was like, oh my God, what do I do? <laughs> like I've just been like, I just thrown way in the deep end. But it was fun, you know, I enjoyed yeah. it, but I'd say my style has, it's evolved. I'd say the biggest thing that's evolved is probably more than the editing side. Like how, yeah. how do I follow my own trend in a way that like, how do I just experiment and do more and, and change it up? Like I was super bold colors, really bright, really colorful for ages. Then I was like, I love that, but I want to tone it back a bit, kind of like change it up, make it a little more grungy. And then I was like, mm -hmm. actually, no, I want to throw some more color in here. But I think, perspectives compositions like i've always chased something unique and i feel like a lot of people say that but like i went out and i did climb rooftops for years nice. like hung off cranes did that then i stopped that because i was like i'm i'm gonna get arrested and i nearly did a few times i was like oh it's, not, it's not worth crazy it's not it's not not worth it for me at all to do that i have a lot of bigger aspirations and ruining my career over something yeah. like that just wasn't an option so but then i started doing helicopter rides and, and hanging out of helicopters or you know, doing these different things that allowed me to find a perspective of something that's been shot a million times that no one has seen. And that's yeah. the real challenge. You go to somewhere of these world's biggest landmarks and you're like, wow, there's nothing new here. There always is. There is always a, a way to show it. There's that's always amazing. a perspective yeah. you can do. That's you the challenge. That, that like, is the challenge. Right? Challenge I set myself every time I go and shoot somewhere. Like, because you're inspired by people on Instagram. So am I. Like, if you think that I just like go somewhere and just completely bring up a brand new idea every time it'd be a lie. Like yeah. I get inspired by people's photos on Instagram or wherever. And I'm like, cool, I want to go here. That looks great. But then I go there and think, okay, how do I do it differently? Right? Like I don't just go to the exactly the same perspective and go, cool, I've got my shot. I saw that. I look great. It's like, yeah, that was amazing. Congrats. Like you found a dope angle. Let me go find something cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And th so this kind of leads me to like, um, I want to ask you about the NFT world because you've had so much success this last, uh, 10 years in this, uh, Web 2.0, I'm going to call it Web 2.0 yeah. to keep it simple. You've been an entrepreneur photographer. Like I, I would say you're as good as an entre entrepreneur as a, as a photographer, but you're also a mentor, you know, and um, you coming into the NFT space. Let me ask, let me start out with one question to you. Do you need to be an artist to be successful uh, in the NFT space? It's categorically, no. I would say like, I think there's a massive misconception because yeah. I like I, I found success as an artist in the NFT space, but I also found success flipping PFP projects, right? Correct. Like the reason I came in was the excitement of, wow, like I can sell my work directly to people that genuinely believe in what I do. I'm not fighting with a client to get a rate that I feel like I deserve. Mm -hmm. And I also see this potential royalty stream yeah. you know, for perpetuity. Whereas, and I'm you know part of a new trend, whatever, we'll talk about that in a sec. But I think... There are also so many people with incredible skill sets across the spectrum of everything that can utilize the power of NFTs or can figure out a way to earn money from NFTs. There's two different things, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're a gym owner to say, hey, I want to have everyone that goes, comes to my gym owning an NFT, perfect. That's a way to utilize the tech of NFTs. Good. Yeah, you might make some extra money, but you're really just harnessing the power of Web3. Yep. Whereas then there's someone coming in that's like, you know, an incredible community builder uh, like Farouk, for example, he'll go like he's not a, an artist by any means, but he's mm. fantastic at building communities. So he then thinks about his skill set. How do I build out something like Rug Radio that's yeah. like, you know, going to be at the forefront of media companies in Web3, no doubt, and, you know, find a way to earn money like that. 
And then, yeah, you've got everything in between. Yeah, if you come in with capital, you could be an incredible, like, collector. Or you can come in with, like, $1,000 and work your way up the food chain, mm -hmm. like, of buying and selling yeah, stuff. And I've and seen it over journey. and over, yeah. Yeah, of course. People get wrecked, no doubt. But I yeah. think there are so many incredible opportunities just to be part of Web3 and what's happening. Yeah. Like, I know coders that were, like, really good Web2 coders that literally spent the last 12 months figuring out Web3 building, like, back end, front end, like contracts, everything. Now they're the most sought after people. If you need a builder in the Web3 space, you're getting charged a shit ton of money, but it's because there are so few people with that skill set. And it's like, wow, cool. Why doesn't every, not everyone, but like all these people that have these skill sets now just transition to that. And it's like, yeah, you're not an artist, but you're bringing a skill set that's valuable. Amazing. So. And through like when you first came into the NFT space, like you were... Um, well, first of all, how did that, when did it hit you? When it was like, okay, this is going to be, this. Th when did you finally believe in Web3? Because I think we all yeah. had, to, had a moment. I So I actually, so funnily enough, a friend of mine emailed me in November 2020, emailed me. He was like, send it to a few of our friends, not even close friends of mine, but his friends. And I was one of those people that he emailed. He was like, check out NFTs. You need to, like, things are about to pop off at the end of the year through the start of 2021. And I just, I was so busy at the time. I just dismissed the email completely. Oh, man. Like, kicking myself. It would have been, like, a three-month bonus extra period. <laughs> wow. uh, would have got some mints done in 2020, which would have been fun. But I, I really started looking in kind of January, February, right when that kind of, like, people oh, boom 2021? kicked off. 2021? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's early, early, <laughs> early. That's still early, man. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Like, it seem, doesn't seem it. I still think, damn, I wish I was there in 2017. But, yeah. um, you know, it's still, it was still early. And, um... I, I was just curious, you know, I had seen Dave Krugman, a friend of mine who actually used to work at Beautiful Destinations as well. He's a fantastic photographer and community builder. He um, he was kind of in the space. Jan Silver was already seeing success on Nifty Gateway to photographers. Um, and there weren't many other photographers. Mm. Uh, and they were talking about this space and they were getting super excited by it. And I was like, damn, I just have to know more. Like, let me jump on some Twitter spaces. Let me figure it out. Like my Twitter at the point was non-existent really like wow. i didn't really use twitter at all i had it but it was nothing so i dived in i followed a bunch of people i was like cool like let me just get the lay of the land who's like who's talking about this a lot like literally converted which is quite funny you know like twi twitter algorithms the moment you start focusing on something then your entire feed is that it's yeah. Like, yeah it just drowns you yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i'm like suddenly like i shifted my twitter into like nft focused I got in a couple of rooms with Dave Krugman, started asking some questions, uh, which was terrifying. For anyone thinking, oh, I don't want to go on a spaces and talk, it's terrifying. But you get more confident. Even <laughs> oh, me man. that talks on Instagram stories every day for the past it's so like, terrifying. 10 years or whatever. It's live. <laughs> Sitting on a space live and then having to ask. And someone goes, oh, hey, Jacob, like, how's it going? Have you got a question? I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's nerve wracking. But it was like, you know, a way to engage with the community. So that was like the first couple of months, Jan through March. Um, and then I... I was just looking for a way to sell my work. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself straight away, I'm not doing it unless it's on super rare. That was like my day. I was like, I'm not minting my work anywhere unless it's on super rare, which is the best place to mint one of one work. Amazing. Um, How so did you get access? I, so this was, I, I kind of always have looked for a way to do it differently than everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like, I've been like, I'm, Find I've been way. able to build relationships. And I was like, I knew at that point that they were difficult about photographers. There weren't photographers on Super at that point. And there was a few of us that were looking for ways to get on. So I was like going through all of my contacts. I was looking at all my friends who's like in, F in, F in NFTs or crypto. And I was like, how do I, how do I finesse this? Yeah. Um, and I ended up going through Justin Blau. And obviously, Blau's had huge success in the music space and NFTs yeah. and everything yeah, yeah. he's done. Um, and he connected me with Zach from Super Rare. Okay. This is really funny, actually, because he connected me. I was like, Jacobs is a great photographer, blah, blah, blah. Like, we'd love to have him considered for Super Rare. Got a reply from Zach being like, oh, this is awesome. We'd love it. Like, we, we can't have you mint still images, though. I was Ooh. like, okay, strange. Like, what do you mean? Mm. He was like, yeah, we don't have any still imagery at all. It has to be digitally altered. I was like, wow, okay. Well, I literally have this email. I'll mint it one day because it's hilarious. Damn. As photography is like completely, uh, the amount of photographers Super Rare has now, like it's amazing to see that transition. But literally at that point, this email was like, hey, we haven't opened the doors up to photographers yet. We've turned a bunch of them down. So if we're going to accept you onto the platform at this point, which is like late March, um, you, have to put, you have to basically mint things that aren't true photos. Mm. Now, of course, realistically, if they let me on, I, I could have just gone and minted photos. They wouldn't have been able to take it down. You know, it's, it's, it's on NFT, the blockchain. Like it's on the blockchain. <laughs> yeah. But like I did go with, obviously I didn't want to you know, cause a bad relationship out of the gate. So I went with a, set, a body of work, which was photo manipulation stuff, which was like a core of what I did 
a while before, but it was mm. nice for me to revisit it. And that was kind of where it really started. You know, Super Air kicked off. My first piece sold. Like, like the first bid came in or the reserve was met after like five minutes. And then it was just like from there. NFT so fever. Like you had the NFT, after, after that, you had the NFT fever. I've spent 90% of my life in the last 16 months deep, yeah. deep in the space. But I love it. I love nice. it. Yeah, how is the culture, bro? Like, how how do you like t t exp for the people that are outside looking in? How's the culture of this NFT space? I I I think overall the sentiment is super positive, and I like it. A lot of support, especially artist to artist. I really like that. Amen. I think there's a level of like toxic positivity that I we've got past now. But there was a point where people were just being nice for the sake of wanting their own shit to blow up. Yeah. Like, oh, they share this and they say, well done, but they're only trying to get eyes on their own stuff. But yeah. now it's become more genuine. And yeah. like, you can tell the sentiment of people's things when they actually are like, oh, wow, what you've done is amazing. Congrats. I'm going to share this because it's just sick instead yeah. of sharing it for their own benefit in a way. Mm -hmm. So I think like overall, I've really loved, you know, the space. And I think it's funny, like uh, Dave Krugman that I mentioned earlier, he said something really really true that it's like you know when we were early to instagram people would laugh at the fact we were like spending so much time on instagram they're like what are you doing this is ridiculous why are you doing it's not that? gonna work and yeah. then a year or two later they're the same people that now they're paying you to consult them as to how to get into web 2 social media it's literally okay. the same thing this is the same thing like nfts right now people are laughing saying this is ridiculous but it's like guarantee you if they don't get in on it like in a year or two they'll be asking us how we did it and yeah. they'll be paying us to teach them how we do it same and it's thing. like and it's like we have, there are so few people in the space and there is an incredible community. There is incredible support for one another. Every, every idea is a good idea because it's a new space and there's so much opportunity for innovation. So like, that's what I love. I think one of my favorite things is like every day I'm like, wow, that's a cool idea. Someone just came up with a new way to utilize a smart contract. Oh wow, this like PFP is actually unique and has crazy cool benefits with nesting or like staying whatever this thing is. And I'm like, people are just like pushing the boundaries and there's nothing that's kind of not ridiculous, but nothing that can't, done in a way like there's so many opportunities here dope, dope. yeah, yeah so J jeff had mentioned that you recently kicked off a project uh, can you tell us a little bit about that <sighs> yeah, <so. laughs> launching a project i didn't realize how intense it would be like i so i launched reflections which is under the brand name dream lab which is kind of the overarching brand for, for what i'm launching reflections is a generative photography project on-chain generated photography project um i actually started it in well, I shot the original photo in 2014. Um, I created led, like multiple different environments based off this one photo over the following few years. Um, then I came into NFTs and I was like watching all this PFP stuff and like obviously seeing these crazy projects go up, 10,000 pieces, sell out in a few minutes and how they lay the layering system is really interesting because you've got like with Bored Apes, it's like you have your traits, you have your different layers and then it, like it basically, depending on what the algorithm says, it like layers different things up. So yeah. you have like yeah. different traits, your different rarity. Um, and then you had like generative art where it's like all code based ones and zeros, letters, words, whatever. And it's like that creates something incredibly visual. You look at art blocks and you've got fidenzas, but it's, it's only a piece of code that created that in like super visual piece of work, which is fascinating to me. I'd never heard of generative art before it's NFTs. Wow. I'm like, how do I combine this with photography to create something that allows me to pull together one of my images an archive of images um, and create randomly generated results based off different images I've created. So I started playing with it in literally in April. I was like pulling together my photos to mint as one of ones. And I found this image and I was like, oh, maybe I like mint this as a one of one. So glad I didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> instead, I spent, I spent like literally up until the last edit I did before we minted it was fucking March, just gone. Like I was wow. still editing this Photoshop file. Created 150 layers, all based off this one image different environments that I've shot around the world mm -hmm. um, and then broke them up into pieces so that we could create a script that allowed when someone went and clicked mint, it would take their wallet address and the block value, like the block of that moment and generate a piece based on those variables of all of the layers that we did. Amazing. So it's completely wow. on chain. Like when you clicked mint, it was only down to those two variables, your wallet address and the block of that moment that actually gave you... Um, the outcome. Sorry, my dog is yeah, now walking puppy. all over yeah, the cables. Did. It's all good. Hey, nah, yeah, he wants to hang now. out. He wants to hang out. <laughs> hang out with daddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, so um, that's where we started. Um, we launched this project. It was amazing to be able to do something innovative and different. You know, I think it was the first kind of on-chain generative, generative photography project. I haven't seen many though. I, I honestly, mm. now that you mentioned all this, I think you're the only project I've actually personally seen. I don't know if there's other projects or not, but... There's people that have done like a layering system in the way that 
it's random, but to have it generated on chip, like I had no idea what the 1111 pieces would be. Mm -hmm. So I had no control over the final actual output. So I could create whatever combinations I liked in Photoshop, like the really nice ones. I was like, this is sick. I hope this comes up. But on mint day, we didn't know what those 1111 would oh be. Oh my God, until, that's nerve-breaking. Yeah. Until that is nerve-breaking. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, wow, what if things mess up? What if like some of the layers don't work together? Like all of this stuff. Thankfully they did. Um, and it's like, it's ironic because you put all of this work in. So, so many like people came in to help build this. It wasn't just me. Like I have no idea about contracts. I have no idea about building a platform. Yeah. I have no idea about any of this. So I had to have a killer team for this. And without them, this would not have been possible. Again, a huge aspect of NFTs is collaboration. Yeah. And I've been fortunate to work with some of the best people I could possibly find to do this. Well, yeah, I was, I was actually going to ask you like about the contracts and the yeah. team and stuff. So about how big is your team? Like how many people is involved? So in right, right now, Dream Lab at, at its peak when we were like doing a lot of different things to get it built, which were like 10 people. Okay. Um, right now we've got a core team of like five um, and we've just hired an Sweet. agency called uh, Boardroom Ventures. Okay. Um, I was just mentioning yeah. to you before this. Um, super stuff. talented guys. They've helped with Jenkins the Valet. They've helped with a bu bunch of other kind of like big NFT kind of like projects um and they're going to help us kind of really bring this out to even more people because like post mint marketing is like a whole different ball game yeah. how do you keep Damn. a community engaged yeah. how do you keep people excited do you use utility do you not is it art oh, should you have to like all yeah. of these things you have to question um i feel your project doesn't need any utility that's the way yeah. i feel about it. when i saw your project like oh this is an art project this is specifically like this is, you, you buy it's, it's 1100 pieces yeah and you know it's, that's that's the total supply ever so if you own one of these, you know, I personally would say I'm I'm betting on the upside of what you do for the rest of your career. That's an easy bet for me. Yeah. Not financial advice, but I feel <laughs> from looking in, from the outside looking in, I feel like yours is an art project. I don't really think it needs any utility. Not I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. Yeah. If you still want to do like if somebody wants access to you, maybe like it'll be so cool if you run to somebody like at a bar or something and they hold one of your NFTs crazy you know i mean, mean like, like i think i think it's really interesting and we talked we discussed this a sec like just before we jumped on here but i want to talk about it again like i think one of one pieces super rare like you don't need any added utility you're buying that for one of two reasons you either the collector like actually i guess one of three there's like first up if it's an artist that's like incredibly well known you know like an x copy hakato like all of those guys that like a beeple that you buy one of those like you can probably flip it within a month or two, maybe sooner. You're buying like a real grail. Mm -hmm. So it's like, cool, that's like a moneymaker. Yeah. Second option is like you just love, and it's probably from like a lesser known artist like myself or someone else who's still well known, but like realistically you're buying into that piece because you love it so much, you're not selling it. You just vibed with it so hard. Like a yeah. photo that I shot that you're like, yes, I want this. I don't care about whether it goes up or down in value. I just love it. Third option is like, okay, cool. I love it, but I also believe in that artist's career and what they're going to do. So I'm going to hold in the hope that in five or 10 years I can flip it. And it's like, because it's like, realistically, there's so little liquidity in that. It's like, you have to bet on the artist. You have to go in and bet on the artist and they don't need to give you anything else other than the piece. Yeah. Whereas like with PFPs, you know, you kind of need it. PFPs, you're sending 10,000, you're trying to build a community. You kind of have to offer other stuff. Something. Like something. But it doesn't though. Because yeah. like, if you think about Board Ape or even like CryptoPunks when they, when they first launched, like, there was no utility to yeah. it. And eight, um, punks are a great example of something, yeah, that did it. They were OGs, OGs. Their status gives them a reason not to do anything. Mm -hmm. However, I would argue that they should have started doing something. Like the At way the point. space went, they should have. And now yeah. they got bought by Yuga and now they're probably going to be down for a while. Whereas like Bored Apes took the great route of like, okay, cool. We're going to do something, but we're also going to actually tick off shit on our roadmap. Yeah. We're going to build so We're going to give so much value to the people that came into our project. Yeah. Like through mutants, through other side land, through all of these things, like they've done just, every, up to this point, they've done everything perfectly. Exactly. So it's like when I came in and, and did reflections, I'm like, okay, cool. This is an art project. I know I don't need to add any value beyond this. The art is what I'm selling, but there's an element of community building that I want to do for people to really rally behind this. And I, I feel like know. the re reason that you really rally behind something is by you know, finding a way to add more value to the community. So we've looked at it. And right now, one of the things we're doing is um, Dream Lab experiences. So anyone that owns uh, an NFT or Reflections NFT gets access to unique experiences. Obviously, with the stuff that I've built over the last few years and the clients that I have and people like that, I've been able to do a lot of these cool things. So yeah. first nice. is like a completely complimentary trip to New York for NFT NYC. We're giving it away to one or two holders, like fun giveaway for that. Hell we've yeah. got <laughs> yeah. yeah we've got we've got other things like i want to do like a hot air balloon skydive with one heli with one winner i want to take someone to the maldives i want to go mm. to dubai like whatever i can do to kind of 
create amazing experiences is what I want the utility to be. Yeah, amazing. Nice. And do you, I mean, uh, of all people, I mean, I think you've traveled to all corners of the earth. Is that correct? And you've Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been fortunate to do a lot of travels, a yeah. lot of experiences. Yeah. And do you still feel excited about traveling? Like, do you get excited about like going to a different yeah. destination or is it is it kind of like, oh, like I got to travel again? Depends where it is. I like, <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've honestly, like I've caught myself being jaded and it's not a nice feeling. Like, I, like I'm excited. Yeah. Genuinely, like I love the feeling of it being excited, even a country that I've been to before because I'm excited to go back. Like yeah. I've, yeah, like I said, I've caught myself being like, oh, whatever. And I'm like, why am I feeling like that? That's yeah. not like, fuck, be excited. You're getting to travel. You're getting to go. Yeah. Like do it. Like be appreciative, be excited. Like yeah. live in that moment because there's nothing better than living in that moment and being excited to be somewhere it elevates everything. It elevates the quality of your work, elevates the quality of the experiences you have if you come at it from the exciting aspect of, wow, I'm ex I'm fortunate to be here. Gratitude, right? Yeah. Love that. Yeah. We were just talking about it like a few days ago on this idea because we've been traveling everywhere filming. And me, I've been traveling for like the last seven years. I've been traveling like almost nonstop except for 2020, yeah. you know, but um, I was telling Roland like, I, I kind of feel jaded, you know, like, so it's great that you mentioned this because it gives me a perspective from somebody else that I can kind of relate to. Like yeah. I feel jaded, like traveling to so many different places and I don't want to feel like that, but I just genuinely do. It's easy, it's easy to get caught up in it, you know? Oh, I've been here, whatever. Like it's another trip, it's another plane ride, it's another hotel. But like, it's like, it's important for both Aggie and I, you know, like mm -hmm. Aggie's brilliant at bringing like such an, it's my girlfriend, by the way, for anyone yeah, listening. Aggie. <laughs> yeah. Shout out. Uh, shout out. Yeah. Big up, you're incredible. I love you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, She's so good at, you know, being so excited about everywhere we go and bringing that energy and that excitement that like it makes me want to do that because it's easy to just be like, oh, whatever, like I'm here again. Like, and then I catch myself and I'd highly just like taking a second when you arrive somewhere to like take it in and think about the reason you're there, why you're there, how fortunate we are to be there. Like mm -hmm. that makes me, that makes me excited. Amazing, that gets yeah. me back into the present moment of like, yeah. fuck yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you've been um, um, like on your throughout your journey you've been mentoring different photographers like you have a uh, different everything from like you know showing people like tutorials like uh courses for photography yeah, yeah. LUTs that you sell I think presets and stuff yeah. presets is it, they call it LUTs or presets I don't LUTs for video but I don't do much oh, video okay got it because <laughs> I have a team uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah there we go let's go and now like you've gone through like this crazy web3 diving all in you know, probably 24 seven for like the last two years and you've launched your own project and now you've bottled all that up from what I understand. You're launching a specific course or is it a course yeah. or is it, yeah, is it yeah. Academy? It's a course. Okay. Yeah. Specifically to onboard people into the NFT space, which I, which I love, man. We need more of this. Tell us a little bit about, about that. Yeah, so I guess backstory, um, there's a few different angles here. So I initially launched a platform called the, uh, the Photography Masterclass, which is where I was like teaching photography, mm -hmm. telling everyone about how I, you know, did what I did from like being in the field to how I shoot to how I edit, like yeah. business kind of tips and tricks. Um, did that for a while, then launched a platform with a friend of mine called Creator Circuit, which was like multiple different creators all in one space teaching their own tutorials. Yes. Um, and it was actually like, I cannot take credit for thinking of doing an NFT course because it was Aggie that came up and it was like last year we were, we were in Italy and we were we were like on this hike and she was like, now I have an idea. Like this was like right peak NFT fever. Like mm. everyone was hyped during the summer. <laughs> it was crazy. And like, she was like, we should do a course because it's like, you've learned, you've learned like thought about you've, sorry. You've uh you've learned so much stuff over the past, you know, six months at that point. Like, how do we kind of take that stuff and put it into a uh, a space for people to learn? And initially I was we were super busy. I was like, ah, eh, like maybe, like maybe down the line, blah, blah. Um, but she kept pushing on it. And I'm so glad she did because <laughs> like as like as we got a bit more time, you know, like NFTs went through a different few different waves, like we sat down, we started scripting videos, and her and I have like she's I mean, I would yeah, I wanna give her credit fully for like the time and effort that she's put into this. Like, yeah, of course it's like, it's me talking through 90% of the videos. She's doing some of the interviews, but like a lot of it is me on camera, obviously teaching kind of my stuff and sharing the knowledge. But like, she's been an integral part of like building out the scripts, building out half the websites and doing all that. And so between her and I, we've we've basically built the NFT course. It's the, wow. NF it's the NFT course.co. It's, it's how, I think it's, for me, it is a way for someone to come in safely 
and have the highest chance of success. Now, success is like, you know, what do you make of success? I'm talking of someone that can come in and like feel like they understand the space. They know what to look out for from a scam standpoint, from being safe in Discord and on like with your wallet address and stuff. Um, Which is super, that's probably one of the extremely, most important things. You got scammed. I lost $90,000 last year. Oh, in a crypto man. Scam. Like I know how it feels. One of the darkest <sighs> months for me. I'm like, I don't want anyone to go through something like that. So along with teaching people like how I interact with collectors and having interviews with really cool people, there is a massive push on safety and security um so it's like yeah for us it's like this is the space that you get to come it's all in one place we've like alongside information that's like just stuff i've learned you know we've pulled from some incredible sources we've worked with guys from ledger to teach people how to kind of like access their products um we've gone through so much research um across the board because there's there's so much out there but it's so messy if you type type in like what is an nft it's like you get the so many results you know where to look yeah a lot of it's a macro on the macro level too it's like it's very broad what people are teaching out there which is which is also great but um if you can if if your course was out like two years ago it would have saved me so much time and energy and that's right now what i want to do because like i'd say most of the people that kind of are the type of person to go out and just learn because they're curious and put the time and effort in have done that now with nfts now there's people that are really interested in it Mm -hmm. but are super busy doing what else and like unless someone gives them all of the information in one place and a support community to help them ask questions and stuff they might not jump in straight away but some of those people are going to be the people that really make it big over the next five years so they need to be in this space but they just don't know how to access it so we wanted to give someone a complete space to go in and learn access a community like ask us questions be part of like we'll do like once a month lives with everyone just have people ask questions and do that like i'm super excited for it because i get hit up all the time on instagram like how do i access the space what do i do like or i get the other side of like fuck you nfts are a scam i'm like great (laughs) you don't need to buy the course don't worry (laughs) like whatever and the course is going to be video course or so it's it's me we guys went all out then we've shot 60 videos uh 60 70 videos everything edited beautiful animations all of this like i mean a lot of it is obviously me talking to camera Mm -hmm. for minutes and minutes and minutes so Mm -hmm. it's like we made it really interactive and stuff there's yeah. homework there's this like discord community we're building so overall i think it's going to be a really incredible space for someone to come in and and learn it and like what i've i heard uh, tom Bilyeu saying um recently on a podcast that he was on it's like his 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 thing and i, I agree with it so much it's like if like nfts are here to stay like don't dismiss them hmm. like like if you don't believe in them cool that's fine but only make that decision after you've actually put the time and effort into learning about them amen like if if you come from a place of hey no whatever i don't care about them you haven't done anything to put like time and effort into understanding them actually then you're coming from like a biased perspective you know and not really doing anything to back up your case whereas if you've gone through you've learned about everything you've dived in for weeks done all your analysis and then you come to the conclusion cool this is a scam fine Like you've done it, but like don't dismiss them straight away. And that's one of the things for us. It's like, you know, I really believed what Tom said because it's important, you know, it's, it's a scary thing to come up to, but I'm really hoping that we can, uh, we can really, you know, help people come into the space safely and, and find the most way to have success. Love that, man. That's awesome. Yeah. That's actually part of our ethos too, with House of Clay and Docs. Like we want to make sure we, because there's there's a lot, there is a lot of bad actors in the space. Unfortunately, like you can get scammed very easily. Um, I think me personally, I've been scammed as well. I didn't lose ninety k, but I did lose, you know, about five, t- five, seven thousand dollars. And a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. It's you know, so, um, it's very important for us that we not only educate, which is, um, and be part of the onboarding process because we do need more people of like you, like us, what we're doing, to, um, have a have an actual way to get into the space. And not be so um, just open to getting scammed. Like, dude, it happens to everybody. It's crazy. So I'm excited about, I'm actually excited to just take the course itself. itself. Yeah. Learn from <laughs> learn from it. I'm sure there's many things I can learn from. Um, I don't consider myself by any means an expert. And um, I feel like it's uh, a great way for us to also see, like, you, like, this. the great thing about Web3 is, like, it's, it's community-based. So you can pull out the course and then like in three months add add to it because of the community feedback yeah you know yeah there's like in more i think one of my favorite parts of it is the interviews that we're doing you know we're connecting with people that like the interviews are more so for people like they're not with artists they're with people that have found success in web3 mm-hmm. from whatever skill set they have 
which I think is really important for like the type of people we want in the course. It's like, we don't, you don't just need to be an artist. Like we talked about before to have success in NFTs, you can be anyone. So for us to be able to teach how you can come into the space, have like amazing interviews with brilliant people that have found success here. Like that's so inspiring for someone that realizes, oh wow, I don't have to be a photographer. I don't have to be a 2D digital artist to come in and make money. Like there is opportunities for everyone. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah so tell us a little bit about, more about the, all the different angles you can get into the space just like just general overview <laughs> i mean i think like so obviously i came in with the artist approach um but i think you know i've been excited to see i mean wow um where do i start i think <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a lot i, I know yeah. no no just I touch like one or two question. Question. <laughs> well i think like so one of the things that we've worked with is a bunch of community mods right and it's like mm-hmm. they've been they just like love building communities they're That's part the of like you know twitch or whatever and they've kind of been building that and now they've come in and they're making good money from being community mods for massive projects well one thing that i one that i, that I noticed is that uh, me personally this is from my point of view is when you come into the space you educate yourself about the space you're going to find out what naturally comes to you whether you're an artist or not or whether you're just somebody that likes to build or want, you want to help a co-founder yeah. or you want to be a co-founder like or just be you know like i said like a mod or a manager or you know in the, in the space community in this space communities is um it's pretty much everything, you know. It's the, it's a un, it's a great unlock of being able to build a successful uh, Web three company. You need your community, so um, there's so many opportunities to be part of that, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been great, and honestly, it's been really nice to talk to you guys and 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 kind of be able to share what we're up to. I'm super proud of Aggie and I and, and the course we're building and the opportunities that we've been able to find within the NFT space and 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 to be able to share that here today and stuff is is great we also have an awesome discount for for your guys's community as well let's go let's go about uh we can link that below this yeah uh, discount code house of clay you get how much percent yeah 10 percent off um you also get uh it's it's on the nft course.co not dot com dot co that, that's <laughs> actually a great uh yeah. And a URL, how did you get that? The domain, dude. Snap that up on GoDaddy as quick as I can. <laughs> Let's oh, go. Yeah. Money. Early, early. <laughs> Want to make sure you guys, anyone in the community gets access to that for a good price. So uh, Amazing, let man. me share oh. that. And, and honestly, just appreciate you guys letting me come here and, and share everything we've been up to. And, and it's great to have other like-minded people in the space yeah. that are super passionate about what's going on. Yeah. Question to you, brother. How did you get at Jacob on Instagram. Oh, damn. <laughs> Dude, I was early and I, I didn't get it straight up, but I um I reached out to a guy like, like way like first few weeks of me having my Instagram account and he had it and he was like, Oh, how much wanna buy it for? And I was like, Whatever you would like and it's like fifty dollars. <laughs> no <laughs> that's a steal. Wow. Wow. So that's 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 the name. Um it's been it's tied to me now. I can't sell it now. So Oh no, yeah. it's yeah. Don't. <laughs> at Jacob. I mean it, it, when I say like when I told Roland, we're gonna uh, be shooting the podcast with at Jacob. I mean, I said, I just said I didn't say at. I said Jacob. And yeah. He's like Jacob, Jacob. I'm like yep, Jacob. Yeah. yeah. So we knew exactly. Nice. Fuck yeah. Yeah. We love it. No, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. It's been it's been great to chat. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember, the course is gonna be ten percent off with at House of Clay. Make sure you use that discount code. And uh, once again, thank you so much for coming on the show man appreciate you it's been a it's been a journey this last 12 16 months but uh to be surrounded by other people that are super passionate about web3 and nfts and hearing everything you guys are up to and being part of that journey is amazing so thank you for having me let's go appreciate you let's go much love guys that's a wrap (laughs) cut cut